Hey guys, this is Mrs. Harbin, and this is Algebra 1, Section 1.1 Presentation. Our biblical correlation for our unit is this. Isaiah 55, 9 says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We know that's what God said to Isaiah, and he's like, you know what? You're going to do everything you can to try and understand this world and its creation, and you're never going to fully know it because my ways and thoughts are higher than your ways or thoughts. And that shouldn't be seen as discouragement, but that should be as encouragement that the more that we know about God and his creation, and that includes math and the order in math, the better that we can hope to understand him. We're always going to be discovering new things in math, and we're never going to reach the end of our studies. Our lesson objective is this. The student U will identify the real number system and use a Venn diagram and number line. Let's take a look at some definitions. A set is a collection of objects. You can see a set of teacups here below. An element or member is an object of a set. And so in our set of teacups, you can see we have a yellow element, a red element, a darker blue and a lighter blue element, another kind of green element, and an orange element, or member. This set has six elements, or six members. An empty or null set is a set with no elements in it. You can see that all of our members, or elements, have disappeared. We do have some symbols in math to represent these sets. An empty set is represented by empty brackets, or this zero with a line through it. That means null set, or empty set. We use this E-looking symbol to represent an element, and an E with a line through it means not an element. A union of sets is when sets come together, when we join two things together. That's what unions mean, and in math it's no different. And we use this symbol U. Think of it like a marriage. That's a union, when you join two things together. An intersection of sets is what is shared when we join the two sets together. We use this uh, this symbol, which kind of looks like an upside down N, if that will help you remember an intersection. It's the part that is shared by the same or by the two different sets. A Venn diagram we've got below. It's two overlapping circles. It can help us show what uh, different sets have in common. It's a way to represent our sets in picture form. So let's take a look at two sets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's set C. And set D is 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. We know that set C has 1 all by itself, but both sets have 2. So we write that in the middle so that it's in both sets. Set C has 3, but both sets have 4. Set C has 5, both sets have 6. And set D also has 8 and 10, separate from set C. This part in the middle, this 2, 4, 6, that is the union of the sets, or what they have in common. So the union of C and D The union of C and D is all the numbers that they have, while the intersection of C and D are the parts where they overlap, just the 2, 4, and 6. So the union is everything they have in common, and the intersection is what overlaps. I think I said that wrong a second ago. So make sure you've listened to this part right here. The union is everything they have in common, and the intersection is what overlaps. One set is a subset of another set. If every element of the first is part of a bigger set. We use this symbol to represent subset, kind of like a sideways U with a line under it. That means subset. A is a subset of B, would be represented with this A, sideways U with a bar under it, B. A is a subset of B. We can represent that uh, pictorially or graphically with this big circle with B and a small A inside showing a part of B. So let's take a look at these two sets again. C, set C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and set D is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We've used the Venn diagram to show the union and the intersection of these two sets. And our question over here, true and false, is if A 
uh, question A is if 5 and 6 are a subset of C. Are 5 and 6 a smaller part of C? That is true. 5 and 6 are both part of C. What about C union D is a subset of C? The union of C and D a subset of C? It is not. The union of C and D has more numbers than just C. So it can't be a smaller part of C. What about letter C? An empty set or a null set is a subset of C. Yep, we could have an empty set. That's represented by the circle up there, and that could be a subset of C. Oops, I skipped ahead to letter D. C is not a subset of C. That is false. C is also considered a subset of C. What about letter E? 6 is a subset of D. Yes, that's true. 6 is a part of D. And the last one. C intersecting D. So the intersection of C and D is a subset of D. That one is true. The intersection of C and D is a subset or part of the whole set of D. We can see that in the Venn diagram, but we can also see it up here. 2, 4, and 6 are a subset of D. When we talk about number sets, we can categorize or organize our numbers in different ways. Our natural numbers, represented with an N, are also what we call our counting numbers. We naturally count 1, 2, 3, and so those are our natural numbers. Natural numbers are a subset or part of whole numbers. Whole numbers, represented with the letter W, are just the natural numbers with the addition of 0. 0, 1, 2, 3. Whole numbers are a subset or a small part of integers. Integers, represented with the letter Z, are all of the whole numbers, natural numbers, plus their opposites. So 1, negative 1, 2, and negative 2, 3, and negative 3, and so forth and so on. Integers are a subset of rational numbers, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But let's look at natural numbers is a subset of whole numbers. Natural numbers are a subset of whole numbers, which is a subset of integers. That's what I just said on that previous slide, but that's how we would represent that with the symbols. The set of real numbers, R, is the union of the set of rational represented with Q and irrational Q prime numbers. This course deals only with the real number system. We won't learn about imaginary numbers until a little bit later in your math careers. So natural numbers are a subset of whole numbers, which are a subset of integers, which are a subset of rational numbers. Rational numbers. Because we haven't gone over it, let's quickly review rational numbers are any number that can be written as a ratio or a fraction. So rational numbers could be 3 over 4, uh, 2 over 1, 6 over 8. Those are our rational numbers, one integer over another integer, or what we've called them probably in previous years, fractions. A finite set is the number of elements that a finite set occurs when the number of elements is a whole number. Finite set occurs when the number of elements in the set is a whole number. An infinite set is a set that is not finite, that has no ending. Rational numbers we just talked about, but here's the definition here as well. They're numbers that can be written as a ratio of two integers when the denominator is not equal to zero. Here it's written out symbolically. Rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a ratio of two integers, A and B. And A is a subset of an integer or an element of the integer. B is an element of the integers, and B is not equal to zero. B cannot be equal to zero. You cannot have the, a zero on the bottom of a ratio for it to be a rational number. The set of irrational numbers, Q prime, consists of numbers that cannot be expressed as a ratio of integers. So let's take a look at this number. Number 5. What sets is it an element of? 
it is a rational number. What about square root of 9, rational or irrational? It is also a rational number because the square root of 9 is 3. What about the square root of 6? The square root of 6 is an irrational number. It cannot be written as a ratio of two integers. And what about this number, a number you should be familiar with, 3.14159? A rational number. Nice job. Today we identified the real number system using a Venn diagram and a number line. We know that numbers are part of sets. They are elements of sets. And they're often part of more than one set as they belong to different subsets within the real number system. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask me in class the next time you see me.